he moves that one out there, but he is not going to like the lie. Uh, that moved down in the rough. This is a good looking shot. Beautiful shot. That is tight. Unbelievable. That is one to save it for the rest of the round. Frank, this would be a nice way to jumpstart the round. Yeah, his momentum uh, can quickly go in the right direction if he makes this. We haven't seen a whole lot of that, Frank, but that has to feel good. Frank, a nice mix of opening holes here at Quail Hollow in the Wells Fargo Championship. Pretty short par three here at the second. 180 yard shot uh, will play more like 175 for the half a club downhill. There's much more green on that right side. If you're not too sure what club to hit, then uh, you should uh, stay away from that left side. You can't hide the flag stick from that man. He is just uh, unbelievable, that, that never deviated offline. Now this for birdie came away with par in the previous round. Wow, I thought he made that. Oh, man. I just pushed it. Boy, that hurts. Just needs to keep it steady here over the putt. Workmanlike hole, he walks away with a par. This is a strong par four, 452 yards, the third hole. It's a good challenge, Frank. It is, big sweeping dog leg left. Actually, in a straight line, it's 315, 320 yards to run out. So if you hit the ball further than that, it's going to have to draw. Otherwise, you'll be hitting in the rough on the other side. Uh, still a lengthy shot under there on a green that actually has three different levels. Frank, we remember what Rory McIlroy did here in 2010, his first PGA Tour victory, a 62 in the final round. It was also the first victory for Ricky Fowler. Yeah, and oddly enough, it was in a playoff. And in that playoff, Ricky just pulled out a driver and smashed it down there, then hit a sand iron to that front left flag, uh, basically to gimme distance. Not only did he win in the playoff, but he beat Rory McIlroy, the then world number one in DA points. And that was the same Ricky Fowler that, remember, in the playoff in 2015 for the Players' Championship, drove the ball in equally daunting fashion um, over those uh, three playoff holes at TPC Sawgrass. Long and straight. That's how you do it. Frank, through the years, we have seen countless what we would call good ball strikers, great swingers of the golf club. But there is something else that separates those kinds of players with the truly great achievers in the sport. What is it? Great achievers have more than one plan. I, I think most players, it's always good if they're playing their golf. But what do you do if your driving is off or if your iron player is off? Do you have a plan B? Great players not only have a plan B, they have a plan C as well. And that's the difference. So when you set foot on the first tee, you've also got to be aware of, what if my driver doesn't go as well as I would like to? Or my iron play isn't as sharp? Can I still compete? So they can turn 74 into a 71. That's right. And at the end of a four-day tournament, the 71 doesn't look so bad. Even if somebody shot 65 that day. Remember, as, as you know, and, we bo and both of us know now, when you look at four days, Someone always plays average for a day, but they don't play bad. 
Golf tournaments aren't hundred yard sprints, they're marathons. Game's about rhythm. It, when you have good rhythm, it just looks effort, effortless. To hit the ball 300 yards through the air, that easy. Interesting, with the almost space-age advancements in golf equipment, what with new, lighter materials, and with the increased focus on fitness and strength, players are hitting the ball longer than ever. That has forced architects to lengthen the golf courses without sacrificing the integrity or the shot value of the original design. I like the looks of this one. Well, that's how you play the game right there. Knock it on the green and give yourself a good look at birdie. Par yesterday. Now for birdie. Just a little too much juice on that birdie putt, Frank. It was bald, very bald. Wow, I thought that was in. Frank, this has been an absolute mess today and all week long. You said it best. Now to the first par five here at Quail Hollow, the fifth hole. It's 570 yards, and it would seem, Frank, that this tee shot sets up well for a guy like Rory McIlroy. It does. Uh, someone that hits it long and uh, moves the ball right to left, and that's what you're going to have to do here. One of the main reasons for that is not necessarily the dog leg, but the fact that the fairway, Rich, slopes away from you. It slopes to the right and away. Um, so that makes that tee shot um, so much more difficult. Long drive, but a bad lie. Uh, wicked. Second shot coming out of the rough here. Getting set for this next shot from the rough, what does the player need to be careful of here, Frank? Well, this is where we're going to see exactly how good they are because, you know, that's not exactly the best lie, but it's sort of doable if you, if you know what you're doing. Frank, not close, but from that lie, not bad. Oh, that's excellent. Seriously, given the conditions, Rich. Getting set now over the putt. Well, the time is now to start making birdies, and there we go. One on the board, and suddenly inside the top 20. Yeah, nothing to be ashamed of in that. But uh, really, you've got to be aggressive from here on in.
presented by EA Sports and the PGA Tour.